Hi, good evening. This is Vishal Singhal from Shelfstrat. Uh, I'm co-founder and AI evangelist with the company. Today we have uh, Mr. Gautman Ashogan, who's AI researcher with Shelfstrat, uh, going to talk to us about uh, building computer vision models with OpenCV. Uh, so I'll just hand over the presentation to him. Uh, meanwhile, uh I'll, I'll suggest that if you have any questions you keep on pouring them and uh as and when if it is slight critical we will try to answer those questions uh, on those slides otherwise we will be answering all of those questions towards the end of the webinar i'll also share uh, my contact details uh, so if you want to send any questions to Gautman later on or if you ask want to ask any other questions i'm I'll be accessible on email and WhatsApp. So I'll hand over the presentation to Gottman now. Gottman, all yours. Uh, Thanks, Vishal. Uh, so uh, today we are going to see about building computer vision models with the OpenCV functions. So we'll uh, just go through what are the most important OpenCV uh, functions, how they are used in the computer vision model, and we will also go, go through. Uh, what, what is a uh, code uh, and how it is be, uh, being used for building uh, these computer vision models. So what is computer vision? So computer vision, we uh, the, the aim of the computer vision is to see the object and uh, detect the, them through uh, multiple and complex steps. So we need to uh, extract the features for example, what are the edges there? What are the shapes? And we need to uh, able to classify them. So if we uh, could see in this uh, image, we need to classify. So what are the um, cars? What, where is the traffic sign? And who are the humans in this road? So this is a classic example for uh, building is a self-driving car and to detect ob objects as we drive along. So what is OpenCV and why it is being used for the computer vision task? So OpenCV is basically an open source computer vision library and it is being uh, funded by Intel and it's one of the uh, largest li libraries in terms of the uh, functions that are there. It has over uh, 2,500 algorithms and the good thing about the OpenCV is that it can be used in multiple languages like Python, Java, C, C++. So coming to uh, the images, how, how do we uh, read them and how do we uh, write them? So uh, basically the images, uh, they are of uh, two types. The one is uh, which we commonly use. Uh, the first one is grayscale images. The second one is uh, the color images. So as we can see in the first image, it's a completely uh, gray image. And uh, here we can see that each point in the image can be described with different pixels ranging from 0 to 255. So, uh, so, so uh, this is the way how the pixels are being treated. And this is uh, basically the plot for your black image, black and white image. So as we go through the uh, color images we need uh, channels different channels so the uh, most commonly used uh, channels for the color images are rgb red green and blue and that bit three channels describing the uh, describing all the three colors and uh, in the combination would give us the color images that we need here we can uh, see that uh, each each pixel is uh, being described with uh, three per points. For example, the eye is uh, described with 90, 0, and 53. While here uh, around the nose, it's been described as 213, 60, 67. So 
this is the way it is being uh, described to enhance the uh, color property of the image. So another important uh, thing while working with images is that um, they need to be uh, separated into intensity and uh, light in some cases like that, that of the HSV images. So uh, here if you could uh, see, there is a cup and uh, it's uh, basically RGB image, uh, the color image. And we could uh, split it into hue and value channels. And uh, how it is useful is that it uh, basically uh, splits the image into the color pixels and the intensity pixels. So uh, we could be working around with uh, completely the color alone or the intensity alone. And this is uh, useful in uh, various applications like video compression, device independent storage. Then the next thing that we could uh, do with images are resizing the images. So uh, uh, one of the uh, hard tasks in computer vision models is that the, the images doesn't come in the uniform size. So we need to be able to be uh, use functions that helps us in resizing the images to, to the particular format that we need them in. So usually uh, how it is being done is uh, we will be uh, extracting the minimum and maximum heights and width of all the images and resizing them to a uniform size so that, that they can be used uh, to build a model. So here if you see there are uh, different uh, uh, OpenCV functions that have been used like uh, uh, inter-nearest, inter-linear, inter-area, inter-cubic, and these helps in resizing the images to uh, prescribed pres formats that we need. So another th the thing that we, we can do is image rotation. So uh, as we have uh, seen in the previous uh, images, uh, there's a resizing of image, there's a rotation of image. We could be wondering why this is uh, efficiently necessary in building a model. Uh, when we build a model, the images that we uh, get usually are of a uniform uh, composition and we need some variations so, so that the image is uh, being detected even when there is a slight variation in the scale or, or the uh, angle in which the object is being shot. For example, if you could see here, the dog is uh, in this uh, stripe and it's been completely inverted in this uh, second image. Our computer vision model needs to detect the uh, image both in the case of uh, the first and the uh, second. So uh, these kind of uh, the things can be done with image rotation and, and this basically uh, lies in the category of data augmentation in computer vision models. The different uh, image augmentation techniques that we can do is uh, rotation, scaling, translation, uh, and rotation here, if you uh, see, it's been uh, uh, completely rotated to 180 degree to get this image rotated image. So here, if you get, uh, see, this is the image translation. So translation, what it uh, does is it takes an image and, uh, uh, and it uh, moves in uh, either X direction or Y direction are uh, uh, both in the X and Y direction to get, get the final image. So here, if you could see, uh, there is a shoe and it's been uh, displaced so that we only uh, see a partial visibility of the shoe. And it's uh, still, the model needs to identify that it's uh, still a shoe. So image translation helps in uh, better understanding how, how the image is being tra transport, transposed and this is an uh, example of image translation. The next thing that we would be seeing with respect to images, image thresholding. So image thresholding, how it acts is, uh, we need to know, know where exactly the uh, picture is and one of the uh, uh, easiest ways to know, know is uh, substituting it a threshold value to, to the image. So 
so if if the uh, pixel value is above the uh, threshold market as one and if it is uh, below market as zero generally uh, these type of uh, thresholdings are done in gray images and as we can uh, see here uh, say for example if we make make the threshold as uh, 100 and if it's uh, up to 255 so if it's below 100 it will be uh, considered as zero and if it's above 100 it will be considered as two one so it will be completely uh, changed and yet a thresholded image will be able to be obtained so here if you could see there's a original image of Messi, and we uh, we have been able to make threshold with uh, different functions like binary uh, threshold binary inverse uh, threshold truncated threshold to zero threshold to zero inverse so uh, so what are these thresholds uh, here uh, i have made the point so the thresholding is a, a function that we can assign ourselves so uh, the, the previous example where we may have made the threshold if it is below a value we substitute a value of zero and above a value we substitute a value of one is threshold binary so here if you could see uh, near this threshold binary there is a uh, step function which describes it and there are um, numerous ways in which this uh, threshold function could be uh, defined for example, uh, in the value and threshold, it's uh, kind of a linear uh, function. So uh, different de definitions of uh, the threshold function use different uh, ideas of how the final threshold image would, would be. The next thing that we see is the adaptive uh, thresholding. So here, what uh, it happens is, so usually when we do it at thresholding, uh, one of the major problems that we face is the image that we capture has different light intensities at different uh, places. So we need to be uh, understanding how this uh, intensity is and uh, make it a threshold that is uh, uniform throughout the image. So the, this is where the adaptive thresholding happens and it uh, goes to uh, each part of the image and according to the color intensity there, it uh, helps in uh, making an uh, adaptive thresholding. And then the next thing that uh, we need to be understanding is the image segmentation. So image segmentation is one of the uh, interesting uh, key concepts. And, and here the approach that has been dealt with is watershed algorithm. So here if you uh, see that there is a there's a watershed line, and as we fill the water, there will be two different topographical regions filled with water. So this is the basic idea with which the images are being dealt with. How it is being dealt in that idea, I'll just explain in the next slide. So here we see there are two overlapped circles. We need to be understanding how these two overlapped circles can be understand, under, understood by the computer and how it could be uh, recognized. So what we do is, first we uh, understand the pixel variations uh, in the total uh, image. So here if you see, at the center of the, those two, two circles is uh, more far away from the pixel variation. And as we go, go to the outer circle, the pixel variation is uh, less. So, uh, so first, this pixel variated image image with the center has been found. Then we may make it a three D transition where this watershed ridge line happens. So, and as we fill those, we could understand that there'll be a overlapping two objects that that are being dealt with in this watershed algorithm. So, this. Uh, good example of image segmentation. The next thing that we could do with OpenCV is bitwise operations. So bitwise operations basically consist of uh, different uh, gates like and, or, not, uh, and score, and how the, these could be integrated with the images. So take for example, this uh, image of uh, coins, and there is another uh, image 
that we have uh, made with the image segmentation, which is the mask image. So if we want to superimpose the mask image with the in input image, uh, we ne need to use be using the AND function. And as we use the AND function, we could get the bitwise AND result, which if we could uh, see uh, the coins with the uh, designated uh, area is being able to be obtained. So this is an example of bitwise operation. The next thing that we could uh, do with the uh, uh, OpenCV function is edge detection. So edge detection uh, is basically you have the image and you need to understand what are the uh, edges that that a person and which are uh, which are very important in recognizing this is the image that we need to be capturing. So how it is being captured is uh, the algorithm goes to the discontinuous uh, discontinuities in depth. It also goes to the discontinuities in the surface orientation, the changes in the material properties, and the variations in the scene illumination. So uh, on intuition level, how it has been done is the pixel variation is being uh, seen. Here, if you could see, there's a, a man standing with a camera. And if you see, the man's uh, coat is in black color. And as, as, a, as it goes to the sky, the, the, the pixel variation is uh, high. So this is be, being uh, taken into account and the edge is being calculated around this uh, man. So th that is how edge detection works. So also one of the key concepts that we need to be understanding is what is edges and what is uh, contours. So, uh, so edge, it uh, understands the pixel variations and it helps to uh, draw those uh, edges, but contours, on the other hand, what it does is it helps in uh, making closed curves. So uh, while in edges, it, while it is sufficient to just draw lines where the pixel variations are there, contours, on the other hand, uh, helps in identifying how these uh, edge variations are combined to form the shape that we need. So for example, we have here, here the image contours that are to be performed for different shell shapes like circle, rectangle, square, triangle, uh, star. So what happens uh, here is it uh, finds those uh, edges with, uh, with the help of the uh, st star contours in the uh, pixel variation. And uh, on addition to, to that, it uh, helps in uh, combining these uh, edge detections to form the uh, contours that we need. So uh, here, if you could see the green lines in each of those objects are the contours that we have been uh, obtained with the help of OpenCV functions. The next thing that we could do with the image is image filtering. So uh, in image fil filtering, it's basically uh, more like the image filtering that we, uh, we have been using in the convolutional neural networks. The pixel values updated by using its neighboring values. So this is the uh, main thing that is uh, different. We uh, uh, Similar to the convolution we do, there's a cross multiplication. But what happens here is uh, the center of an image, uh, the center per pixel uh, is updated with respect to, to the eight neighboring uh, per pixels and its own per pixel. So as you can see, uh, for example, the E pixel here is being uh, updated with respect to the uh, filter by uh, multiplying with the neighboring values and obtaining the final value. So one of the uh, most important uh, filtering technique that's been uh, prevalently used is Gaussian filtering, so which helps in blurring the images and thereby reducing the noise that is present in the image. So uh, one of the key applications where it has been uh, used, the future detection of images is image alignment. So uh, we, we would have generally used this mobile apps where we scan those images. And what happens is it, it correctly uh, identifies which is the paper and realigns it so that uh, it looks like a properly scanned page. So how it has been uh, the done is, uh, of more of a open CV functions than of 
uh, any deep learning models. So it understands uh, where the edges are there, there for the paper and it uh, understands the uh, angle of alignment for the paper and it it makes the alignment properly so, so that we, we get the final uh, scanned image. So this future de detection that we uh, need for the images uh, can be done through several techniques and I uh, will be uh, talking to, to three major techniques uh, to which this uh, uh, future extraction is being done and one of the uh, very important future extraction technique is the histogram of oriental gra gradients. So how this happens is uh, in the case of edge futures we only identify the pixel is a edge or not. So in case of the histogram of the oriented gradients we also provide the edge direction so this is the done by exciting the gradient and the orientation so we in addition to the edge uh, direction we also uh, calculate the magnitude we calculate both the magnitude and direction and and we make combination to understand how the edges of the uh, major person so here if you could uh, see there's a card and the future extraction is being done with the help of this hog uh, future and the extracted image is uh, uh, finally present here and there's a dog and again it uh, the features are being extracted and we get a final image so how this uh, histogram of gradients is being done uh, so a little bit of my mathematics of what it goes so uh, let's take an example of this uh, uh, pixel representation where we need to understand this 85 per pixel. So uh, how the uh, magnitude and the gradient of this is there. So what we do is we'll go to the uh, x direction. So if we go, uh, compare the values between the uh, left hand side and the right hand side and we calculate it's 89 uh, minus 78. Again, when we go to the y direction, it is 68 minus 56, which gives it a uh, 12 magnitude. And, and this is uh, essentially the gradient in the x direction and y direction. And we need to be calculating the whole gradient, which is uh, just the square root of the uh, x and y direction. So th that gives us the total gradient magnitude. And the, uh, another the thing that we need to uh, have in mind is we also need to calculate the direction of this and how it has been done is it's basically tan phi is equal to gy by gx and uh, phi is equal to tan inverse of gy by gx. So we have calculated the magnitude, we have calculated the direction. And what we need to do recursively is for each of those pixel values, we need to uh, find the uh, gradient magnitude, gradient direction. So once uh, we find the uh, gradients, we need to be uh, able to put them in slots. So here I will uh, just uh, explain to this slide and go back to that slide. So what we had, uh, as we saw in the previous pixel representation is we found the magnitude, we found the orientation. So uh, after that, what we do is the orientation uh, is the angle, which essentially would be in the a range of 0 to 180 degree. So we uh, create this bins of uh, 20 degree intervals and here if you could see in the bin it's 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 and it's 120, 140, 160 and 180. So it's, uh, the whole uh, angle is being covered and here if you could see the orientation is 36 degree which lies in the interval of 20 to 40. So what we do is we create a ratio between this 20 and 40 and split this uh, magnitude and here if you could uh, see uh, this uh, 40 minus 36 by 20 which is 4 by 20 into 13.6 is being done to uh, calculate the magnitude belonging to the uh, bin of 20 and uh, likewise again the the magnitude ratio belonging to 40 is being calculated and we uh, place 
Likewise, for each pixel, the magnitudes have been calculated, and in the bins, they are being they are being uh, placed. So, if you could uh, see here, the bins are uh, nine. There are nine bins, and it's uh, it could be represented as a nine into uh, one matrix. So, this gives the histogram of the gradients, and we will be taking. 8 into 8 cells. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't be taking the whole image. We would be taking each 8 into 8 uh, cells. And we would be calculating this uh, gradient uh, as 9 cross uh, 1 for each of these 8 cross uh, 8 cells. And um, what we will do is we, we will be creating a block. How we will be creating is uh, we will create a block with 16 cross uh, 16. So uh, 16 cross uh, 16 needs Four eight eight cross uh, eight uh, cells, and each eight cross eight cell gives nine cross one matrix. So we will essentially be having a thirty six cross one matrix to to describe a block. And in the in this particular image, uh, as we uh, divide this uh, sixteen cross six sixteen, we get uh, one zero five five block. So uh, essentially, we will have one zero five five into thirty six into one. So this is the size of the matrix that represents this uh, hog future for the particular image. And this vector is also being uh, normalized so that it gives a better result. So uh, as we have seen in the previous uh, slides, that uh, is an example of histo histogram of gradients model. And there are two other models. And uh, the second model is called scale invariant future transform. So here also we uh, try to extract the features from the Im image, but we, we we are keeping in mind that whatever ha uh, happens to this scale, like uh, we go a close-up shot or a long shot, still the future is being ca captured, and uh, the image uh, the image futures are being essentially ca captured. Whatever happens, like rotation, shrinking, uh, expanding, distortion, so scale invariant future transform. Uh, has this key point detection and uh, how, how these uh, steps have been uh, sequentially made is first it makes a scale space extrema detection, key point localization, orientation assignment, key point descriptors, key point matching. So essentially what it happens is it understands what are the key points that we need to be uh, knowing to best describe the image. So. Uh, as discussed before, uh, it uh, it uh, needs to understand what are the key, key points despite, despite of the uh, scale in which the image is being captured. So uh, how it can be uh, done is, first we will uh, take a, a normal image and we will uh, downsample each time. So as we can see in the uh, left corner, there is a size of 250 and we are each time reducing the scale like from 250 it's going to 125 and then again goes to 60 and again it goes to 30. So as we can see these are of different uh, scales for the same image and what we are doing is we are uh, doing a Gaussian blurring. So the, what this Gaussian blurring that does is it helps in uh, reducing the noise. So as we can see in the first images there is grass and uh, trees and grass, which as uh, the blurring uh, happens um, sequentially, these are being uh, vanishing. So, so uh, this four cross uh, five uh, image matrix will help us in uh, understanding how this uh, shift operates and uh, extracting those uh, features. So, the, uh, so, so we take this to 250 uh, scale image and we do the uh, blurring five times to get the first octave. Again, we, we take the 125 uh, scale image and we do a five times sequentially the blurring to get the second octave. We continue it to get the third and fourth uh, octaves. So we, we uh, essentially get different scales of images with different blurrings. So once we uh, got that, what we will be doing is we will be subtracting. So we have this first octave of five images. So uh, what we will do is we will subtract those images to get the essential features. So there will be like one minus two, two minus three, three minus four, four minus five, 
So uh, once we subtract, we'll be able to get, get what are the uh, features that are present. And here, as, as you can see, we are able to get, get what is the features that exactly make it a tower for the Eiffel Tower. So once we get these subtracted images, uh, next we need to be knowing what is the exact key points that we need to be knowing to understand the image. So how it has been done is, so these four images are being sequentially there. And uh, let's uh, say we take uh, a arbitrary uh, point. For example, here, the arbitrary point is the x, x. And what we do it, we compare it with these uh, surrounding uh, pixels in the same image. Here, the surrounding uh, pixels are uh, 3, 3, 6, and 7, 8. So th there are eight surrounding uh, pixels. And what we do, do is we also compare it with the uh, previous and the after image. So again, here, what happens is there are nine pre previous sequential points and, and, and nine after points. So we, we compare with all those points in order to understand whether uh, this point is a local maxima or minima, and uh, if the point is is of the lowest value or the greatest value, then this qualifies automatically for the local maxima, or local minima. So uh, essentially, uh, by that we will be able to be knowing what are the key points uh, in, the, in the image, and this is how uh, scale invariant uh, feature. Uh, happens so and uh, uh, up to now we have uh, seen uh, hog model and shift model that's the, the third and final model which is called surf model so this is speed uh, speeded up robust future model so what happens is uh, so laplacian is the method for which uh, by which we are able to understand what are the edges that are present in the image so what we do is we we use the Gaussian kernel to understand the features and Laplacian to uh, finally um, plot these uh, features in in the shift image. So here what we do is we do it parallelly instead of doing it sequentially we do it parallelly so that the speed increases. So this is essentially the difference between the shift model and the surf model. So the next, uh, so uh, we have covered the uh, hog models, uh, shift model, and serve model, surf model for the future extraction. So uh, that is the uh, the main few, uh, ideas for the future extraction. Here, uh, what we do is uh, uh, the the basic uh, open CV uh, how it understands the phase futures uh, without the use of any. Uh, convolutional neural network models. So what it uh, does is it has this uh, extractors called hard cascades. So uh, it will it will compare uh, the each uh, feature in, in different um, parts of the phase to understand uh, whether it's a phase or not. For example, uh, the eyebrow. It's uh, the eyebrow has this feature like uh, white, black, and white. And if that uh, matches with the hard cascade, we'll be known, uh, able to know that is a, a particular eyebrow. So uh, likewise, we'll use a different hard cascades and a combination of hard cascades to identify whether it's a face or not. So this was essentially used uh, before uh, for understanding how a face has been detected. But now uh, some advanced convolution neural networks are also there that for understanding the face. So as uh, said in the uh, previous uh, slide, this hard cascades and uh, has uh, different ideas. For a face, it will be like, uh, so uh, what are the hard cascades that are there? If, if all are having a below a threshold confidence, it will uh, make a box to understand uh, the plot that this is a face. Another thing that is, uh, we can do is, once we understand that, that is the phase, we can uh, again use the uh, eye hard cascades to uh, understand whether the, uh, whether the eyes are present in the image and uh, where exactly the eyes are being present. So th this is the basic model of uh, using OpenCV for the phase detection. 
So we have uh, seen a lot of OpenCV functions. So uh, let's see how they, they are being coded uh, in Python. So here, as we can see, I'm importing the CV2 function and uh, using this uh, cat image and uh, to trying to uh, read it. One of the, the, the most important things is I am uh, read uh, these the images in the format of BGR, blue, green, and red. And we need the uh, format of red, green, blue. So uh, we uh, essentially convert from BGR to RGB to uh, get the final image. And and I have said that, that that it reads the images in the BGR format. So here, if we if we use the function cv2 dot im read uh, unchanged, what happens is it uh, reads the Im image in the format of BGR. So this is the for for format of BGR image as it reads it uh, and. And as discussed uh, previously, we, we need to be now knowing how your image looks in the hue saturation value. So, uh, uh, so that we can be doing with the essentially using this uh, function called cv2, cv2 dot color bgr to hsv. So we would be able to get the hsv image of the uh, input image. Again, another important thing that we need to be doing is resizing the image. So uh, a data set uh, won't always have a uniform uh, sized images. We need to understand which is the best uh, height to width ratio that would be best suited for our model and resize it accordingly uh, to input to our model. And uh, this open CV functions essentially helps in uh, doing the data augmentation. So we need to be able to extract the features, uh, understand how the image uh, could be to, to, it, to uh, make it a better input for, for the model. So, so that is the main key idea that uh, we are aiming for. And one of the uh, very good things that could be done in data augmentation is rotating the image. So what we do here is, we do, do a get rotation uh, matrix 2D. So, so what it does is essentially it takes the center points and it uh, takes the uh, angle and it uh, accordingly rotates the image. So it uh, rotates the image and uh, default is uh, uh, counterclockwise. So it uh, 90 degree counterclockwise it uh, uh, rotates and we get the final rotated image. Another thing that we could be doing is image translation in the image uh, augmentation. So what we can do is here, if you could see uh, M we are defining as 10 minus 100 and 0, 01 minus 100. So uh, yeah, so 10 minus 100, what it essentially does is uh, in the vertical axis, it uh, moves 100 uh, units, and it uh, again 0, 1 minus 100. The horizontal axis it moves 100 uh, 100 uh, uh, units. So we, we get a uh, different image from the uh, initial image, and we are aiming to uh, see whether the model can fit even this image. So the next thing that we saw, saw is thresholding. So we input a particular image like a cat and whether we, we, we are able to get the threshold uh, image for that. So for that, what we need to be doing is here, if you could see, we need to be uh, first converting into the gray image. So once we convert into a gray image, we need to specify the threshold. So here I have made the threshold as 127. So if it's below 127, it makes it zero. And it's above 127 up to 255 it makes uh, the pixel value as one. So these are uh, different ways in which the threshold could be de de defined. And I have made uh, different outputs of this image. As we can see, uh, 
different uh, threshold gives different uh, variations of those thresholded images. But even if we have a, a threshold, we are not able to uh, fully understand how the uh, cat is with this threshold. So uh, there comes the adaptive threshold. So this adaptive threshold, as we can see, see, takes into account the neighboring units to get, get that threshold. And uh, as we can see in the adaptive mean and adaptive Gaussian thresholding, it gives a better future of how the cat is as compared to a normal threshold image. The next thing that we saw is image segmentation, where uh, we are given the image and we need to segment it. And this actually is an example of uh, coins that, that are overlapping and whether we, we are able to uh, output this, those uh, coins and the watershed algorithm helped in understanding uh, where those coins are and essentially plot those images. So this is again uh, the operation of the bitwise operation. So what it essentially does it, it uh, takes the input of the, those coins and again it, uh, it takes the watershed algorithm to understand those points and we, we are using this AND uh, operator, uh, so CV2 bitwise AND to, uh, to concatenate both the image and the mask to get the final bitwise uh, operator. So here you can see that the, both the coins and the points are being superimposed to get the final image. So uh, for the image segmentation, uh, or the edge detection, one of the most commonly used algorithms is called uh, canny edge algorithm. So what it uh, does is it uses the function called uh, CV2 canny, and between uh, those values, it uh, helps in uh, detecting uh, those edges. So here we can see the, the overlap of the coins have specific uh, edges to them. So the, the next thing that we could see is image contours. So image contours, basic idea is to understand what are the contours present in, uh, in the coins and how they can be uh, detected. So uh, first we are uh, trying to find the contours with, uh, with the example of the threshold. And uh, the, these basically helps in understanding the uh, uh, what are the contours present and uh, making the calculations uh, simpler. So once we uh, get the image contours and the hierarchy of those contours, we can just use those contours as again the input with the draw contours to finally output the uh, contours image. So here if you could uh, see uh, the overlapping uh, coins, that is a contour uh, for every uh, coin that has been detected. And it is in green because we have uh, inputted as 0 to 45, 0. So only the G is present. So the counter is in green color. So uh, the next thing that we, we discussed was that uh, hog uh, descriptor, where we input an image and we need to be knowing the histogram of gradients of, uh, of the image. So here we uh, make this uh, input of a puppy, and we resize it, and we give it uh, to, to the hog uh, descriptor. So what it happens is we have this orientations of uh, nine. So uh, as you could, uh, uh, you could recall, there were the different bins like 0, 20, 40, 60. So that, that, that is the, what the orientations mean. And pixels per, per cell is, so up to how much per pixels we need to uh, take for creating each uh, gradient and how much uh, cells per uh, block these are uh, hyperparameters and we could uh, take uh, different values too so once i input the hog uh, features what are the different units that have been uh, needed and we will be able to be uh, getting the histogram of gradient oriented gradients so as you can see uh, we have input this uh, uh, shape of uh, puppy and uh, the, the uh, it's uh, for each of the different parts it's understanding uh, how the uh, features are uh, and it's uh, it has input uh, it has output this image which uh, captures the essence of uh, where the puppy is so uh, some of the functions that i have uh, described are of uh, proprietary information and can't be used in the latest uh, versions 
So what I did, it was I downgraded the versions uh, to, to a uh, lower version so that uh, they could best describe the functions. So here I have taken a human face and I have used a, a filtering, which is a, a, a filtering. And as you could uh, see, uh, the face has uh, black shades in the, the first image. And as you uh, go to the second image, the, the uh, image smoothening happens. It, it, it has a more uh, uniform um, color gradient. And this could also be done with uh, Gaussian blurring. And as you can see, it's more or less the same. And this is uh, essentially uh, a method to either uh, do smoothening of image or blurring of image so that the noise is being uh, completely being taken out and the essential features could be captured. So as the hog features, the, uh, the other two features are shift and surf. So here I'm using this uh, shift feature. Uh, to extract the, the essential features. So I'm inputting the uh, image and I'm uh, converting into the grayscale and I'm using CV2X features dot uh, shift create so, so that the shift is uh, being uh, created and I define the key points in the descriptors and I try to output uh, what are the key points that it has detected for this image. So as we can see in the face, the hat the eyes, the nose, and the uh, mouth. So these uh, has some of the very important uh, key points that best describes the image uh, is what the shift has uh, come up with. Again, uh, surf is uh, very uh, similar to uh, shift. Uh, one of the main things that it does is it does a parallel computation so that the speed is uh, more. So here too, if you can see what are the key points that the what are the key points for the face, face that are best captured uh, here. And the next thing that I did was uh, the OpenCV uh, git, I cloned it. Uh, this is for uh, inputting the hard ca cascade uh, filters. So I um, I imported the hard cascade frontal face so that the face is being detected. And I, again, I used the hard cascade eye so the eye is being detected. So once uh, the image is being input, uh, uh, if, if, if it has a ma match for a face, what we can uh, do is uh, it will uh, it will identify the x y w h. So x y is the midpoint of that uh, face, and w h will are the width and height of the uh, face. So once we have this uh, four units, we can uh, uh, easily uh, calculate what are the edges and the edge uh, vertices. So we will be able to identify those. And uh, after uh, plotting that thing, we, we can also uh, plot the eye and where the eye is being present. Uh, here it was not accurate, uh, but it was able to uh, calculate approximately where the face is and where the eye is. It calculated only on eye. Uh, I, I'm not sure why it didn't calculate the other eye. So this is how uh, we use the OpenCV functions. So OpenCV functions, uh, why we need to be uh, knowing about them is uh, just with the help of a uh, convolution neural network models, we will be not be able to uh, get uh, good accuracies because uh, there'll be a lot of noises and uh, essentially we need to extract the best features from the image and OpenCV uh, provides a beautiful platform to, uh, to extract those uh, features and we need to be knowing these functions so that we will extract those uh, particular features and uh, make a better model of computer vision. So this is uh, my presentation. So if you guys uh, have any doubt, uh, you could ask. Thank you. Thank you, Gautman. So uh, audience, if you have any questions, this is the time. Okay, so first one is, uh, suppose the face of the dog is facing some other side other than what we see here in example. Do we need to keep editing the program? Um, here, 
it, it depends upon uh, what is our final ob objective. Here, uh, what I have shown is the base direction is hard, ca hard, ca uh, hard cascades. So this is uh, a very simplified computer vision model. So uh, probably if you use a convolutional neural networks, it would better ca capture uh, both the frontal, uh, front and uh, the back as a uh, dog is what I think. Okay. Any other questions, audience? So, uh, uh, We'll be posting this uh, video uh, of Gautman on Shellstrad YouTube channel. I'll just uh, mention the YouTube channel here for your reference. I've given this YouTube channel in which uh, you will be able to find this video in about four or five days time. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any other questions, you are free to ask. And my contact details again would be just in case you have any questions, you can also send it to uh, me directly. Uh, Gautman, have you shared your contact details there if anybody would like to connect with you? Uh, yes, uh, for the code you can uh, see to the uh, Git, uh, GitHub account and uh, yeah, then the name you can search in LinkedIn uh, for if, if you want to contact me for any tools. Yeah, so you can connect with me on uh, with him on LinkedIn and he'll be able to respond to you there. Uh, no, we won't be uh, sharing the slide deck, but you'll be able to see the video in some time on our YouTube channel. Another question, uh, requesting to know more about feature extraction for fingerprint data set. Uh, fingerprint, I think uh, I, I have not worked uh, before with fingerprints, but uh, okay. a good uh, Computer vision model should be able to capture those, I think. like a CNN model, convolution model. Okay. So we still have eight minutes to go. If you have any questions, please uh, send it through. Otherwise, we would like to close the webinar here. So I don't see any more questions coming, Gautman. So, uh, so I'll I'll suggest you uh, you can send more questions to us if you have any uh, in future, and uh, I'll I will pass it on to uh, Gautman and he will be able to respond on that. So uh, we would like to close the webinar now. Thank you uh, and have a good day to all. Uh, all my across the world. Thanks, Vatman. Have a good day. Thanks, to all. Uh, thanks, guys, for attending the event.